question says that uh, there is a monochromatic light and uh, same wavelength in the experiment setup of diffraction pattern as well as the interference pattern and the slit separation is one millimeter and within that 10 interference fringes are found to be within the central maximum of the diffraction pattern determine the width of the single slit if the screen is uh, kept at a some distance uh, same distance from the slit in the two cases see there are this is a single slit experiment and we know that this is the central maximum in the diffraction pattern if this angle is theta we know that sine theta is equal to lambda by a where a is the size of each slit as theta is very small so theta is equal to lambda by a now how much is this this distance will be we can use uh, this will be d times 2 theta now this d times 2 theta is the width of the central maximum and as per the question within this there will be 10 fringes so there will be 10 fringes of interference pattern so which is almost equal to 10 times beta we can take so let's check d is same for both for interference pattern experiment as well as the diffraction pattern so therefore 10 times beta beta is lambda capital d by small d and this will be equal to 2 d and theta is equal to lambda by a from here a is equal to d by 5 d is the slit separation which is 1 millimeter so 1 by 5 millimeter is nearly 0 0.2 millimeter this is the size of the slit as we can understand from this question the other question follows they are saying if a and b represent the maximum and minimum amplitude of an amplitude modulated wave then write the expression for the modulation index for this one we can take the modulation index to be equal to a minus b divided by a plus b a and b are the maximum and minimum in the second case they are asking a message signal of frequency 20 kilohertz and peak voltage 10 volts is used to modulate a carrier of frequency 2 megahertz and uh, peak voltage of 15 volts calculate the modulation index in this case the modulation index it will be equal to peak voltage of the message signal divided by peak voltage of the carrier signal so how much it will be equal to 10 by 15 this is 2 by 3 or it is almost equal to 0 0.67 they are asking why the modulation index is generally kept less than 1 it is kept less than 1 to overcome over modulation because over modulation leads to distortion it leads to distortion of the signal so in order to avoid distortion you can state that it is kept less than one as per the other question let's check write the relation between half life and the average life of a radioactive sample you know that the half life is 0 0.693 divided by lambda and the average life is 1 by lambda so if you divide t half divided by t average it is coming to be 0 0.693 or you can take it to be log 2 to the base is as per your convenience now in the second part in a given sample two isotopes a and b are initially present in the ratio 1 is to 2 that is number of active nuclei of a and b they are in the ratio 1 is to 2 but everybody knows that due to disintegration the number of active nuclei changes okay so after what time they are asking how long will it take so that the sample has the isotopes in the ratio 2 is to 1 after some time na dash divided by nb dash this is equal to 2 is to 1 now what is na dash and nd dash let's check na dash it will be equal to na into half to the power t by its half life which is given as 60 years 
and nb dash is initial nb into half to the power t by its half life which is equal to 30 this is 2 by 1 let's cross multiply and after cross multiply we get 4 is equal to half to the power t by 60 minus t by 30 so 4 is equal to half to the power minus t by 60 so we can have 2 square or just make it positive and take the ratio we have t by 60 it is equal to 2 so t is equal to 120 years so after this much time the sample ratio will become 2 by 1 as per the given question let's see the other question what is end error in a meter bridge okay actually end error is due to the small uh, pieces of metal that are attached here these uh, uh, small sheets metallic sheets and due to which the actual zero of the scale shifts so therefore you remember the end error it is due to shifting of zero to different point this is one way of saying end error another is it is due to stray resistance stray means unwanted resistance in the joints stray resistance or you can say non-uniformity of the wire the wire is non-uniform due to these attachments which are present at the ends so these causes the error in the measurement of resistance which is called end error okay let's check in these two arms of the meter bridge this r is equal to 5 ohm and this resistance is s and uh, this is balancing length now they are asking when this resistance s is shunted with an equal resistance that means another s is connected in parallel then the new balancing length is 1.5 l1 where l1 is the initial balancing length then calculate the value of s anyway let's check this is 5 so 5 by s it will be equal to ratio of this resistance which is equal to L1 divided by 100 minus L1. Now when I shunt this S with another resistance that is in parallel it becomes S by 2. So 5 divided by S by 2 and this L1 becomes how much they have given 1.5 L1. So this also becomes 100 minus 1.5 L1. So now we have to solve L1. So what I do is I divide it. I divide and I get an equation in L1. After solving we get L1 is equal to 100 by 3 centimeter. And after substituting this L1 we get S is equal to 10 ohm. Students are advised to check the answer by putting them in the respective equations.